Hi, and welcome to Stability Before Strength. My name is Oscar, and I'll be your host for this video. Let's get started by going over the different types of treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome. There are many different types of treatments for CTS, which range from corticosteroid injections to following a physical therapy program of exercises and stretches specifically for CTS. The first treatment option is drugs such as painkillers, otherwise known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which include over-the-counter medications such as ibuprofen and Tylenol and are often used to help relieve symptoms of severe pain and inflammation due to injury. However, taking too many non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, especially on an empty stomach, can lead to severe consequences such as ulcers, kidney damage, joint cartilage damage, and it also impairs the healing process. So, if you do decide to take over-the-counter painkiller medications such as Tylenol or Ibuprofen, do so only if you really need it and not on an empty stomach. The second treatment is wearing a wrist brace or splint to help prevent excessive damage to the tissue. Although not fashionable, they are useful in preventing wrist motions that pinch the median nerve. They are often recommended wearing them at night and during primary activities that cause symptoms of CTS. The third type of treatment is taking supplements such as omega-3 fatty acids and B vitamins, which has helped some people, but there's little research data that supports this treatment, just anecdotal reports from people with CTS. The fourth type of treatment is corticosteroid injections, otherwise known as cortisone shots, which is seen as a quick fix. Corticosteroid injections are effective in temporarily relieving symptoms of CTS but it's not a long-term solution for CTS or other nagging pains. Cortisone shots can lead to many side effects and complications such as joint infection, nerve damage, nearby death to the bone, and thinning of bones such as seen in osteoporosis, which is why cortisone shots are usually limited to three shots per year. Here's a little background information on cortisone. Cortisone is naturally produced by the body during times of stress which causes a spike in blood pressure and also temporarily suppresses the immune system. Cortisone is effective in relieving pains because it destroys and damages the nearby connective tissue around the area of trauma, which is why it decreases the swelling and inflammation. Temporary relief can range from a couple weeks to a few months, but after that the pain usually comes back and you're back to square one. But this time you have destroyed and damaged other muscles, tendons, and important cartilage that could have helped you recover. Which is why in my personal opinion, cortisone shots should be seen as a last resort next to surgery and only used in severe cases. Which brings me to the next type of treatment, surgery. Surgery is the last kind of treatment you want to have. Not all surgeries are bad, in fact, surgeries are sometimes needed. But if you can help prevent surgery by finding an alternative safe method, wouldn't you try it first? Carpal tunnel surgery is recommended for the more severe cases. There are two common surgeries for carpal tunnel syndrome. The first is known as carpal tunnel release surgery, in which they release the transverse carpal ligament by cutting it into two parts to release the pressure of the median nerve. The second and newer surgery technique is called the endoscopic carpal tunnel release, which basically does the same thing as the first treatment, which is to make more room for the medium nerve to pass. Lastly, there's physiotherapy, which include ultrasound, nerve flossing, magnetic therapy, yoga, and physical therapy, which, in my opinion, is the best kind of treatment. This all goes back to the laws of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, which is why carpal tunnel stretches and exercise is an effective treatment. As you recall, the main problem of CTS is an obstruction of the median nerve, which is generally due to overuse of certain muscles. So, if you can rest and stretch the tight muscles and build endurance and stability to help strengthen other muscles that assist in similar movements of the wrist, we can undo the damage of the tissue and help recover from carpal tunnel syndrome. Why stability and endurance? Well, most of the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the wrist and forearm are made mostly of type 1 fibers, meaning they are small and are slow to fatigue. They have different properties than larger muscles such as your chest and back muscles and respond better by overloading the muscle by time under pressure, which is generally achieved by performing high volume exercises, meaning 3-4 to four sets of each exercise with little to no weight and high repetition, 12 reps or higher, 30 seconds or higher. 
and a short recovery rest less than 30 seconds in between sets. Think of these muscles as the muscles marathons use to train to run 26.2 miles. When you're working on your computer or holding your smartphone or any other activity that requires using your wrist for an excessive amount of time, aren't you doing a marathon with your wrist muscles? Our bodies have an amazing ability to heal itself, especially if given the right stretches and exercises. You can help prevent and make a quick recovery from carpal tunnel syndrome and get back to doing the things you love. If you suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, I would first get it diagnosed by a trusted licensed manual physical therapist who can help you recover from CTS and will provide you with an exercise and stretch program to help you recover from CTS. You can also click on the link to follow a stretching routine and exercise program that I have created for my years of working under a licensed doctor of physical therapy. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful and informative. See you guys later.